What's going on guys, it's Sith and I'm going to a new two YouTube video today and today we're going to go over how to pug. I have a lot of friends asking me this question of how do I pug, like I can't ever do good during pug, I never win my pugs, never do good during pugs, people just play too random, people don't play like they would in league matches, they just run out in the open and they tap heads. And I'm going to show you guys how I played this pug and the concept of how I play pugs and how my win loss ratio used to be so good in pugs and how um, they became so good in pugs. But first off, before I start talking about that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, where you should start off as. I wouldn't, I never hop right into a pug without scream, uh, DMing. Um, I do a lot of aim practice and then out of aim practice, I do a lot of frag shack, uh, do a lot of deathmatch from there. Um, if you haven't already watched my other YouTube video, I would watch that before this one. It's like, um, it's like practicing your aim, working on that, work on that first and then come back to this video afterwards. And then, uh, we're going to explain uh, how on this process of during this pug, what I was thinking, what I did and how I played and how you should play in pugs as well in order to have the best success rate, um, best win rate. And then also like the best, uh, fragging rate as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this demo started. We start off on CT side. CT, this is piss round. I go window off the start of the round just because I think window is a good spot to play in a corner like this, an off angle right here where you can take USP fights with uh, against Glocks here. So I went out mid, spot underpass is really important to do in case one's lurking there. Because my teammates died already in sight, I didn't want to push out. And we want to wait for your teammates to rotate from the opposite side to come help you. So I just sat here picking off people. Getting this information. Guy stands out in the open. Missed my shots there. Here this is where I messed up. He's this kid wide swing. I mean, I didn't expect that to happen. But uh, yeah, I was just holding the right side, and then my teammates just died around me, and I was in it. If I was able to get that frag on triple box, that round would have been a lot different. But because I I uh, got only that first frag and missed the second one on triple box, it, it the round ended up going in their favor, which is fine. I uh, bought a scout second round to buy up in. MDN, if you guys are running, he is my teammate as well. I go window. Window is a good spot with the, for the scout at the start of the round. Tapped him with the scout at the start of the round, which is really good. The damage ended up going in my favor, even though I didn't have armor. Did the damage to the guy with AK and armor. So yeah, this is really important. What I just did there, that transition from window all the way to cat, you want to be dynamic. You know, the fact that I was able to switch up. The, the fact that I was able to switch up and go and move around the map instead of going window after I took my first shot, you need to be dynamic. So I moved... I moved there to uh, Cat. I got my another shot off. Now I'm moving all the way over toward back toward window side. You know, I'm doing what I can to be dynamic with it. That was just off timing. If I would have waited a little bit longer, I probably could have killed that guy. So that, that's my fault right there. And just because he was more patient, he won that round. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next round. We end up losing this, but it was not a bad eco force up. I did my damage, got two scout tags, but uh, we ended up not winning the round because it wasn't enough in the end. This is full eco round. On a full eco round like this, pugs, lead matches, scrims, whatever you do, you want to do something dynamic. Okay, you don't want to do your same normal 2-1-2 two, two default, you want to switch it up. So here I called that we should push mid. So we go as uh, four guys, push mid, gave up A side basically. Pretty sure I get this, uh, I die instantly top mid. No, we all die here, I guess. And that was the end of the round. So normal, normal, you lose piss round, you lose the other two rounds right off the bat. No big deal. Uh, not stressing it, moving on to the next round. This is really important here on this buy round. I had around like 4,400. Instead of buying head armor, I bought utility so I could use it to support wherever I decided to play. And then, um, sorry, they're talking. Yeah, so I use it to buy utility instead of buying head armor just so I can throw it just in case I can support. Because uh, here I wanted to go connector based off my spawn. They smoke top mid. Smoke connector so I can peek underpass. This is a one way for underpass if you didn't know. Got the call that one's going up cat. Played a little bit of an off angle, got the first frag. Played in the second frag right there. Immediately fell off. I heard the guy in connector here. I could have used my flash. This is where I made the mistake. 
I slow peaked them. I should use my flash and wide peaked them instead. It definitely would have made the difference on that round. But I got my two frags I needed to. Even though I got those two frags, I think we end up losing the round just because my teammate died here and. Maybe we did this round. I don't remember to be honest. No, I think this guy loses the round in one v one. So he goes on in the next round right here. Yep, four zero. Right now it's not looking good. We're losing a bunch of rounds. I did my job getting those two frags, but it just wasn't enough in the end because I couldn't get the third one. Immediately, just like those two tags. Like it doesn't matter if you get two frags and you don't get, if you don't win the round from those frags, then it doesn't count for your R dubs, and it doesn't make a difference whether you got those frags or not. They're not impact frags in the end. And you know, it doesn't matter if your score is 40 kills and you only got nine R dubs and you're pissed off. Why did I only get nine R dubs? I got 41 frags. It's because of the fact they weren't impact frags, and that's a big thing here. See another eco round. I called for my teammates that we should get it, do something different. We end up pushing uh, a ramp. I instantly die here because I think because I, I peek right here. I, I think I remember what happens here. Here, this is really important if you watch this as well. If you look at the economy here, they had one alive that last round, which is pretty crucial. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I need to get a gun out for next round. We're, we need to buy, if I get a gun out, I could either drop another gun to one of these guys. If I got an off, that would be huge for us for the upcoming round as well. So I sit here, wait in a little off angle position, see if anyone comes into me. So I picked up an AK here. That's good for the next upcoming round. I didn't go too far away because I have no information. They could be coming up ramp. They could be coming up apps. No information here. I'm just kind of like playing it, playing it like I have no information. So I post up in a corner, off angle again. Get this op right here. You want to change it up as well. So I went over here, took a peek in halls and held. Guy peeked in me. Took another peek there. Held an angle right here, ran right in my crosshair. Now, if that last guy would have caught up to me, then that wouldn't have been so smart on my play to keep running after that. I was just trying to escape to mid since I got a frag there. I didn't expect the other guy to be there. But in that situation, I got four frags. None of them were impact frags, so it doesn't really matter. But the fact is, it really impacted this upcoming round because they only had one alive. So if we win this round right here, they're pretty much reset for the most part. They might have one more buy-in. So I decided to go window here with the op. Probably not my best play, but I leg that guy to one HP. He hits me as well, so I gotta switch up my position. I fall off here. My teammates die around me toward uh, connector and cat. So right now it's it's a matter of like up for grabs where they're gonna go. So right not right now I'm just I'm peeking ramp, seeing if I see anything there. Hit the rotation. I hear they're going up cat. So I'm spotting cat. I got blind there. Didn't peek again. Waited for the smoke to fade. Here you go. Now we're in a position where it's like I, I called my teammate. I called my teammate here. Grab this off right here in front of me. And we'll double save. That's a smart play right there, considering that if I if we double save, this guy can buy next round. I can drop one for next round as well. The other guy's gonna have a have a UMP low buy, maybe CZ as well. That's how you manage the economy. That's how you become a good IGL as well by learning to do this in pugs. You can do this for the upcoming round as well. See here, this guy, this guy ramp. I end up dying here because I try to save the op so I can buy, I can drop one next round. This guy shifted all. Well, I guess he ran up, but I didn't realize it. This guy ends up shooting me in the back because he gets me caught up in a position where I'm not, I'm not looking. But you know, I tried to save it. it was my best. You know, it didn't work out, so it ended up. I ended up buying for the next round. I couldn't drop anyone because I couldn't save that op. So that was a big thing. I could have dropped that for the next upcoming round, which would have been big. See, we could have had that extra rifle, and one person would have only been on CZ. So right now, I got to be dynamic with it. I just went, I just went connector one round. I went window one round. I got to be dynamic. I got to switch it up. I got to help out across the map where they're where they're gonna be at, you know. So because they already ran out mid, I don't know if they're right side. So I'm gonna hold right side here. Right now, I'm holding window. I'm holding for the jump out. The flash didn't blind me. One guy jumped out. Got that info. Killed this guy right here. I shouldn't have repeated into that. That was my fault. But, you know, we ended up losing the round. 
Not bad. So right now it's starting off like it's going bad. Like this is the point where most people in the public they give up. They start buying and they start buying it irregularly they start forcing up every single round and they're like whatever let's move on to the next pug that's not really how you win pugs you want to keep going until that 16th that 16th point hits you know you don't want to stop until that point hits so i am forcing up i'm changing up my position trying to help out wherever i can around the map to support because my teammates necessarily aren't doing the best job on fragging um we're losing b site we're losing a site we're losing mid so i gotta switch it up under balk here is a good spot the only problem is they have mollies on them, which would have been huge if they would have used it on me. So I threw a flash right there to blind. Hit again. Flash one more time. I did 50 to that guy and then he instantly killed him because he one way in that smoke somehow. So I wasn't really able to do anything to influence my team right there. My teammates in the end were able to clean up the frags from the damage that was there. And I think they ended up cleaning this around right here. So. We end up winning our first round, which is good. I didn't do that much damage in the end, so I'm not going to get that much artifice from it. But the fact that they were able to, to to clean up that round made a big difference. So now their economy is really good. Uh, we only had we had two alive, so they could easily reset us if they lose this round, which makes this round super important. Um, you know you know how impactful you have to be in this round in order to, to not get reset and lose the next couple rounds just because you, you got reset. So... Changing it up here as an opera, you want to change it up your positioning. You want to be very like, you want to be very different. You don't want to do the same thing over. I was watching the cross to triple, but then I realized I need to support my teammates because they're dying all around. Teammate gets one frag, gets another frag, which is really big for him. If he didn't get those frags, this honestly round wouldn't have happened. So nobody's B. Work on my ray around. Spotting underpasses is big. We have no information right now. We, all we know is bombs down. So now I, the call out for stairs. I come to help out my teammate. Watching the cross. Mauling default for him. One triple box. Called it. Missed my shot there. Vo avoided the flash. Me and my teammates are going to retake this together. I've smoked two flashes. Right now, I have an op, so I don't I don't want to unscope from anything just because I'm in this position. Now, I'm holding right side default. He's calling and he's holding left side default. We and him are coordinating out together, which is the biggest thing. You want to coordinate with your teammates. In this instance, instance that he's actually my, my actual teammate, so. Right there, I hit a lucky flick on that guy on, on bomb site. And then it was ended up getting that, that frag right there, which which was good because you know I didn't wasn't that impactful like I said I got one frag barely any damage but I won the round which is gonna be good because he's gonna spiral in our direction in a minute you're gonna see that just because the fact that we're spiraling the economy toward our side see they had you know they had three alive then four alive now they're, the economy starting to diminish after we went two rounds in a row ours is pretty low as well so each round going ahead we need to win if not then we're, it's gonna it's not gonna go to our favor so I need to be dynamic if I'm gonna use an op still. Go core connector, get a frag. My teammate just got a frag. It's a really bad shot right there. Smudge connector. Hit a flick on that guy. Hold it one more time, just in case. One called underpass, so I'm going to get underpass in a second. I hear the guy push up chair as well, so that's that's also computing in my brain that I need to realize. They're taking mid control. I need to back off. I need to reposition. I need to see where else I can help around the map. Nobody's in window, so I got to watch for the boost up for a window. A flash right here. And this is right down from underpass. This was not the smart play. If I if I would have jump spotted, that would have known he was peeking it. But I, I wasn't in my wasn't my smartest play just because I'm not an opera. I, I don't really think about those angles. As a rifler, all the time I'm staring up from that bottom side as a terrace, looking up for that window guy. I just made the mistake of making that peek. So we end up winning that round uh, with two alive. So our economy is slowly starting to go up. We need we need to keep as many lives as possible. Now since I'm not really being impactful with the op. And throw down did a really good damage the other round. This is where you need to say, okay, enough opping. I need to switch to a rifle. I need to be impactful. Let me switch it up and try to do the best I can to support my teammates win this round. So here I'm going up cat. I'm being dynamic. Holding right side of the smoke. Guy walks into my crosshair. Killed him. Called one's underpass. I molly it from a safe distance. Smoke as well. See, if I would have flashed over mid, I wouldn't be able to get this op right here. But I didn't realize... That uh, that he fired that shot. So from that point, I got one kill, held mid control, slowed him down, so where my teammates can do the damage from here. From there, we end up winning that round as well. So which is good. I did the damage. They ended up winning the round. 
no big deal. You know, we, we go on to the next round, all right? This point, 12-9. Right now, like, score looks, like, really good for me. But right now, a lot of those frags, probably, like, six, seven of those frags were literally just from, like, saving. So none of those really count. My, my, I'm not really being that impactful this round. So I need to step it up. I need to do something. So right now, I, I went to go help out A. Smoked out ramp. Go and help out connector. Just in case one comes up mid. They call for the smokes B. I'm on my sub connector, so I'm just kind of sitting here. It was I meant to molly cat, but I followed there, so I didn't get the frag. I did the damage on him, which was good. And our teammates were able to clean up this last guy who was low, uh, 11 HP on site. So it's good that rounds are spawning in our direction. They were on eco that round because their economy couldn't handle it. It started boiling down. I did the damage I needed to. Didn't get the frag, but the damage is what you need if you want to build up your R dubs and to be a good to have good stats in a pugs. Here we go. They're on full buy here. I smoke out ramp. I'm playing a little bit of off angle here. Decide to play an angle like this just in case I think they're going to group up Pauls. Try to do something like sneaky and quick. So I'm playing for this right now. All right, it's pretty quiet. All of a sudden, they start going for an execute. I wait for those counter flashes just because you know they're going to happen. If you, if you play in any league... Any league matches, you know they're gonna they're gonna flash with their smokes. You just gotta be prepared for it. My teammate jump sandwich here. He ends up dying. I kill one. To damage two other people. And then uh, and then he ends up going to two v two. My teammate ends up playing with my other teammate right here, and they end up uh, clutching out that round. So it's six seven right now. It's really good. It started. It went from literally zero and seven to six and seven because we started spawning rounds together just from like tearing down their economy round by round. And then finally getting it to a point where it favored us and benefited us in the end. So now uh, it's 6-7 right now. We're running double up again. I feel like I can be dynamic with it. So this is the round I go over toward uh, toward B. Now this this right here might be the most... A, a big, a really important round you're going to see here. Killed one guy connector. I know there's another one here, so I got to be careful of him. I thought I killed a guy in chair, so I called out he was cat. But he, the other guy ended up being chair, didn't know what he had, didn't know if he had an AK, didn't know if he had Deagle, didn't know what he had. So I kind of played it back a little bit. I ended up legging that guy, apparently. So now I'm holding under, win I'm holding connectors since he called under window. One apps, get the first frag, regroup a little bit. He ends up going, he ends up being out in sight. Now I'm holding the apps jump out. So right here I end up missing I end up missing a bunch of shots. I scoped in way too much, missed that shot as well. And then that I wasn't able to get the third one on. I missed too many shots in that scenario, which I, I could have definitely won it. So that's eight seven. I did my job on that part. I got two frags. Um, nothing too special there. Uh, did my part in the round. I keep I kept the op for next round, which is good, just because I, I got the frags that I needed to. Cat's a really good position as an offer where you can peek mid and also help out B and also help out A. It's a really strong position on the map if you have a secondary op. I wouldn't place there as a primary. Um, most of the times in my setups in, in main, what I do is I run op cat and then a double op CT. And that's usually the setups that I run when I play in main. Usually it works really well against um, hiring teams. Now, right now they're on a double op setup. And this is really important if you see right here. They have the opening pick. So right now it's up to me to basically make that refrag on them. So I'm basically sitting here. Waiting for aggression. I, I want to play the edge of the smoke to a certain point. I don't want to peek into an op. So I'm kind of holding for an op to peek into me. I'm getting a little curious since we're, we're man. It's even right now. So I need to get some info on B apps. It's pretty quiet. So right now, took a peek on that opper. Jumped on the ledge. Really important right here. Because I scope in and I walk forward more to get more information. If I would have fell back there after getting that one frag, I would have had no information, no positioning. So right now... I'm able to kill this guy right here. What just happened? Alright, cool. Alright. <laughs> so, I fell back right there. Killed that guy off the flash that I just threw in a window. So, then I killed that last guy right there. That ended up being a 4k just from holding apps. Strong positioning with the op. Just the, that last round, they thought I was going to be cat at the op. So, they tried to creep up close to try to kill me on cat. But then I ended up switching it up to play a little bit more different of a position toward, uh, toward apps. 
able to get multiple frags by just changing my positioning up after each frag I got with the AWP, which is really crucial if you're an AWPer. Positioning is literally the biggest factor of being an AWPer, along with like relatively good aim and, and good flicks. But it, the biggest thing is positioning on this. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move on to T-side, talk about that a little bit. Because T-side went pretty strong as well from, uh, from my side, and I'll show you guys what happened. I think I ended up getting... I ended up getting one frag that round, and then Chris cleaned up the other frags. I uh, actually went past that, but I'll let play on. So right now, we're going to force up into this. My go-to is usually a UMP, but <clears throat> since I'm feeling pretty confident in my aim right now, like I have a decent amount of frags, 20 and 13 at half, I'm going to go ahead and switch to an, I'm going to use an AK. I'm not going to use a UMP. I want it to be really viable. So I don't want to play too close. I know they're on Nico. I pull a little bit back a little bit. Try to try not to be in a position where I'm gonna die. I was able to tap that guy right out there from from pal from ticket. I know there's gonna be a guy jungle. I aim for him. This guy stares, shoots me, kill that guy falling at me, and then I move towards CT. I know CT is gonna be the last guy. I got a little bit greedy trying to do the damage on him. If I would have held a little bit, I would have killed that guy right there, and he would have uh, he would have died or at least done more damage to him. But I got my two frags, or three frags. I almost got a little bit of damage on the fourth one, 27. So I ended up doing pretty good damage for myself and getting good items right there. Uh, a lot of people, what you'll see in pugs is if they're on um, enemy teams on eco rounds, what they'll do is they'll literally just get aggressive and uh, push around the map and go for like heavy frags like I just did, kind of like out of a out of an unknown position. Honestly, if you go with friends and try to go out a position like that against ecos, it's not going to work as well if it's lurking around the map trying to catch off players that have pistols and aren't really watching each other's flanks and pugs. So, uh, spread out when when you're on the when you're on the uh, anti eco, don't uh, don't aggress too much by yourself. You don't want to be in a position where you're known. You want to be in a position where you're, you're kind of like sneaking around. Catching them off guard when they have the pistols. Called out his underpass. I killed underpass guy. Five shots. I need to reload. We know the last guy went toward ramp. And he ends up saving this rifle toward the end. That's going to be pretty much the end of that. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next round. We win that round. Let's look here. So I have uh, I, I still have my AK. Um... 5.3 into this money. Everyone need, has a buy, so we're good. I don't have to drop anyone. Uh, building my economy up, 24 and 14, pretty good so far. Starting off this half pretty good. I I try to like go my own separate way and kind of like like scourge away from my teammates just because I want to be in a position where I can catch players off guard and do the damage to them. So right here, I'm Molly Van. Throw him off ledge a little bit just in case he's close. I spam a little bit. My teammates are taking mid control, still spamming. Could be on ledge. I don't know if he has an off. I don't know what he has. I have no information besides the fact that he threw the smoke. This is good right here, what I'm doing. See, my teammates are able to pressure mid because I was able to pressure B. Because, I, in fact, I made a lot of noise shooting B halls. They were able to take mid control, and two guys were on B site. One guy was mid, and then one guy, and there were a couple A sites. So now right now, it's a good situation where we got multiple trades on our end and their end. It's 3v3, but the favor goes in the terrorist side. Because the fact that, uh, if you look right here, the CTs are pretty split between A site, B site, and then uh, one lurking around getting to early rotate. So around mid. So right now... Right now, this position, like... I shouldn't have gone here because they, my teammate just said they were watching this position. I should have just went B apps and hit it. So uh, I ended up dying here, which wasn't a good part of my place, and they end up losing. They end up losing that round. So it affected us pretty bad into this, but I'm gonna try to switch it up, see what I can do. I don't want to play the same thing. I went B last round. I'm probably not gonna go B again just because it, you gotta switch it up. You, if you if you can't get control of one part of a map, you go to a different part of a map more control. That's just how, how you gotta work it. Especially look for your weaknesses in enemy's side, such as CT side or T side, and exploit it. If something keeps working over and over again, let's say you're able to take B apps really well, then go take B apps really well. Go take B apps. You know what I mean? It's it's what's working for you. Go ahead and do it. Here you go. We got four frags right here. Able to push them off. So what we're just gonna go ahead and uh and go pass this in the next round right now. End up killing that last guy because he's hiding in halls. But uh so right now I'm twenty six and fifteen, doing what I need to do to get frags. Pretty solid T side so, so so far. Um something you guys need to realize though as well. Uh, if you are pugging not even pugging scrims, pugs, league matches, a lot of the time now, a lot of the meta for the maps has changed. 
A lot of the meta for the maps has changed, and a lot of it is moved toward uh, sides being um, sides being T sided instead of CT sided. So you see, a, you see in a lot of pugs that uh, God, I can't even talk. I'm sorry about the barking guys. So yeah, moving with my teammate here, working control. We actually end up losing this drop. This guy bench makes a really good play, but I'm just, I'm just gonna move on from that point. But, uh, like I was saying, like, meta's changed a lot now in pugs, scrims, matches. Like, CT side, if you can do, like, an 8-7 T side on your favor, or, like, even just go even, or not, like, even, but if you barely get, like, barely go over or barely under, it's really easy to just win out T side. Just because a lot of teams don't know how to play a really good T CT side, unless they're, like, a really good coordinated team in MDL or main, like, Rise or Air Eternity, or um, a team that has a lot of experience playing together in multiple scrims against really big main teams so right now they spotted me here i have to fall off like it's not a good position like they spotted me we're already a man down i need to work a different part of the map they're they're focused on palace right now there's three guys four almost four guys on a site we need to switch it up move it around unfortunately we don't wait long enough for them to spread back out so we we hit here over at a site and it ends up being a stack so i'm just gonna try to creep out here with my teammate This round ends up being, this round ends up being lost as well. So it's, we're down a man. Uh, it's eco round. I'm just gonna go ahead and move on from that. We lose that round. There's no way we win it. We're already down a man. This is by round 2018. It's gonna happen to you. So, teammates sometimes are gonna leave a pug like that. Um, you just kind of have to work with it. You roll with the punches. Like do what you can to like keep pushing on. Because even though like you had lost a man in the pug, doesn't mean the pug's over. Yeah, you can keep going on. Right here, I bought an AK here, and my teammates ended up buying around as well, just because we had, like, it was buy around. We, had, like, kind of had no choice but to buy. I mean, we could have waited for that last guy to come in, but we ended up buying anyways, so. Alright, so right now, I, we just killed one toward a ramp. So we have a lot of information that they're going to be split around. They're going to be like, okay, well, we need to, they need to find information. They don't have any information at all. They lost a guy, so they need to even it out. I kill this guy here. I, I reposition to a good position because I know they're going to try to peek mid, look for that extra frag. So I'm waiting for this mid guy right here. Killed the mid guy. I should have ran away, but instead I, I try to come back to commit to that fight. And then I ended up losing that, which is not smart on my play, but, you know, I did what I had to do to get the frags, and I think we might have won this round, I'm not sure. Yeah, we ended up winning that round because I got the important frags right there to open it up for us. So right now, we, our, our fifth came back. It's 13-11. We're in a good spot. We had one alive, so it's not really the best, but we're in a position where we can easily turn this, like, keep this going in our favor for this upcoming round. So he didn't get it in time. He didn't spawn it in time for us for this round. So we're gonna have to play this 4v5. I don't know what's going on toward the map. I have a smoke and f I have a uh, two flashes, a molly, and a smoke. Here's here's what I what's really important. What I did here. So this is a little bit risky, just because if they if they nade this or double nade this, you're dead. You're instantly dead. But uh, the fact that I was able to get in this corner, hold just in case this for the smoke to fade, I'm able to sit here and wait. And then uh, Molly right under balcony, right here. This is really good here, just because it sets up my teammates in a position to, uh, to push out a little bit. Now they're focused on me and Palace because I just threw that utility instead of being focused on ramp. Also, I'm making all this noise, flashing out of Palace. They're focusing on Palace. They're not focusing on ramp at all. So right now, all the attention's on me. I get myself in a good position where I can help take gunfights, peek off my teammates, holding holding jungle right now. So you know the last two were jungle and CT. I'm not committing to anything. My teammate's doing a really good job getting frags this round. MDN did a really good job here. Got that amazing flick right there. We know where the last guy's at. He's CT. My teammate ends up peeking him, ends up dying. Gonna make a bad play. I'm not gonna commit to a gunfight like this. This is be retarded to commit. So I'm I'm basically just outplaying my opponent by baiting out some shots, letting him to walk into my teammate's crosshair, who's playing a crossfire, holding the cross out. Easy bait, easy win. Just like that, my teammate made a huge play right there and ended up winning the round because of it. So, 
So now it's uh, 11 14. Game's pretty much almost done. It's almost in our favor. It looks like they're going to be on like a crappy buy here just because like they need to force up because it's the 14th round. They could have waited till last round. Most higher end teams would, but because this is probably they're going to force into it. And uh, I try to support MDN here. <clears throat> End up getting blinded, holding for any aggression. Here's what I do I ask for a flash here, this corner. Ends up flashing me at a ramp. But this guy close ends up killing me, but I didn't do a great job of clearing that out. I should have took my time with that. But uh, I tried to just run with the flash and see if it would blind him. But, um. So basically, yeah. Um. MDN's not really in a good spot here to do anything. And I think we end up losing this round, actually. Oh, no, we end up winning it. Okay. Throwdown, I guess, end up clutching up toward the end and end up working out toward our favor. So if you see like if you if you see this like a common recurring theme in pugs is literally just be dynamic. You know if you're on one side of the map trying to like work information, do something like trying to work a pick, do something aggressive, and they're stopping you constantly at that part of the map, move on to another portion of the map. There's like three, four, five different ends in a map where you can easily just work. You know you don't have to work one part of a map. You know. Here I end up killing the guy window. Low, I did two kills right here. Just throwing utility, trying to get my teammates to go get a bomb down. I get in a good position like this, end up killing the last guy. Easily done, easy pug win. I mean, ended up ended up being a little bit difficult since we lost some players toward the end, but in the, in the end we did what we needed to do when we ended up winning the round. Um, basically what you'll see in this is like a reoccurring theme of like I said, being dynamic, changing up your position after you get frags. If you're going to be an offer, you need to be a playmaker. You need to be dynamic. You need to do something that your riflers aren't doing. Your riflers are kind of just holding, trying to wait for them to execute sites. The offer is looking for picks. He's looking for information. He's trying to be that playmaker while your uh, your riflers are, are trying to be a little bit more toward um, catching players off guard and uh, playing a little bit toward off so they can hit their shots in the end when it matters. But uh, it, this is going to be my first episode of this uh of uh how to pug i hope you guys enjoyed it i really do apologize for the barking in the end hopefully um i can have someone edit this and cut it out the barking but if not no big deal i'll just make sure that it doesn't happen again for the next episode um if you guys have any questions at all go ahead and comment down below my twitter is also going to be in the description also i will also link in the description the uh, aim training video as well if you want to catch that um it had like three almost 200 300 views on that um, it's really important to like watch it just to know like where to start off as because if you don't have the aim to play at a caliber against other like high-end open players or even IM main players then you should really be training your aim getting it in practice if you want to be serious about CSGO moving forward to the next step in your division but uh, that's gonna be it for me guys thanks for tuning in and watching this video really do appreciate it and I hope you see you guys next one peace